Okay, I'm going to try to make this quick. There's going to be three parts to it. There are three different issues I'm going to deal with. And I'm going to try to make them as quick as possible. All right, first, Mike Peterson says that D. Murphy 25 allegedly Dave, new vid on Serpent Seed. Could you go over the difference of taken wife and given in marriage? Okay. So this is pretty simple. All right, to take a wife is to take a woman to be your wife. All right, and then to give in marriage is to um, give your daughter to a man because the daughter belongs to the man and the daughter belongs to the father until her father gives her in marriage all right so we see here like in Genesis 2 that the daughters of men this means that they the daughters belong to their fathers until they give them in marriage and so we read in like uh, Matthew 24 uh, they shall be marrying and giving uh, am I wrong about that it's not Matthew 24 it's Matthew 22 sorry about that for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven so to take a wife would be to marry a wife and then to give is in marriage it would be to give your daughter to her husband give your daughter to a man to marry that's the only difference and then of course uh, regarding the serpent seed uh, that can be that theory can be utterly um, utterly squashed oh wrong wrong chapter in the very first verse of chapter 4 Genesis 4 and Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I've gotten a man from the Lord so Cain was born of Adam and Eve and she conceived Cain and said I've gotten a man from the Lord there's no way to twist that into the I've heard very very ignorant people to put it nicely say that the Lord is the serpent that's just stupid I mean it goes beyond ignorance to way over on the side of stupid all right so anybody preaching the serpent seed doctrine they don't care about the truth at all and these are the same people that are teaching all the UFO stuff so I'm not gonna get into that the Hollywood make-believe sci-fi stuff all right so the part two um, let's go here let's I don't want to do that yet let me make that part three part two I'm going to address St. Louis. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so St. Louis, here, let's listen to what he says. Let's try to be fair as possible. I'm going to go about 50 to 60 seconds. All right, this is your boy St. Louis back with another video. I got to respond to the false prophets, uh, Leon Washington and, and uh, R-True 64, um, R-True 64, uh, they say one saved always saves is false, so I got to correct them on that. Well, let me just say this, because I know where y'all got that false teaching from, and uh, Leon went to Matthew 24. And he says that Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Well, Leon, that has nothing to do with salvation. That's talking to the Jews and the Jews only because Matthew's gospel was written to Jews and was not. All right, so I got a big issue with that. Okay. 
I'm not sure if that's the question. Let me just check real quick. So um, I make the point that it, it, you're incorrect to say that Matthew is for the Jews. So I, I'm totally against that. All right. So basically what you're saying is don't read Matthew. Don't believe it's for you. Don't believe the Bible. And I got a big issue with that. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to touch on that real quickly, but I want to make sure this is Oh, there we go. Do I believe in replacement theology? So first of all, there's actually two points here I want to I want to cover. And that is Matthew 24. So it, if you read Matthew 24, he that endure to the end, I you may perhaps you've heard me say this over and over again. There are false teachers claiming that, well, all you have to do is endure to the end and you're going to be saved. All right, that's not what it's talking about at all. All right, it's not another pathway to everlasting life. The only path to everlasting life is through Jesus Christ. All right, so the idea that you don't need Jesus Christ, all you have to do is endure to the end, it's ridiculous. It goes beyond ridiculous into that great big area known as stupid it's just straight up stupid to say you don't need Jesus Christ just endure to the end that's how you get saved and that's not what it's talking about at all what this is referring to is that people are going to be getting saved all the way into until the end that's it it's that simple it's not rocket science it's not written in code it's very simple people are going to be get, getting saved all the way until the end and <clears throat> this is consistent all throughout the Bible okay so like we read Luke 18 verse 8 I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man cometh shall he find faith on the earth so this is consistent with what we're reading in Matthew 24 that the world is going to get worse and worse and worse before it gets better, right? It'll get better upon the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's interesting that he asked, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Suggesting that there are going to be fewer and fewer saved people on earth, which would be consistent with the idea that the world is getting worse and worse and worse. All right, so anyways, uh, just covering that part of that and then to say okay Matthew 24 is for the Jews it's not for you that's not written anywhere it's not suggested all right and so we read in Matthew 24 uh, the disciples are asking him what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and then they list out all these things that are going to happen right and it it's concluded when he comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels will gather together the uh, the elect this will be the end all right when the sun is darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the star shall fall from heaven this is the end of the world all right and then like again mark 13 parallels matthew 24 so also does luke 21 all right and then keep in mind very last verse here and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Now, he's not talking to Jews only. He's not talking to Gentiles only. He's not talking to the people of that time only. He's talking to all people for all time. The people before baby Jesus, the people of today, the people of tomorrow, forever and ever. That's who he's talking to. What I say unto you, I say unto all watch capital W love it now let's see if I can navigate my way to my own page I don't there we go and what I say unto you I say unto all watch Matthew 24 is for everybody okay just like it says in Timothy I think 2nd Timothy 3 verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness 
that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So all the scripture is for you. So Matthew 24 is for you. It's from God. It's for you, and there's great benefit. And I don't like the idea of saying, well, that's not for you. That's for people with big nose and dark hair. I, I don't agree with that at all. There's only one pathway to everlasting life, and that's through Jesus Christ. There is no special group of people. And I think this goes. This will segue into the other question. I'll, I wanted to make this short, and I'm always too long-winded. Okay, replacement theology. All right. So I, what I consider replacement theology is replacing true believers in Jesus Christ with people that reject Jesus Christ. Now, the people in Israel, 1948 created Israel. This is not the same Jews as the Jews in the Old Testament. There is no special way of getting eternal life um, outside of believing in Jesus Christ. If they reject Jesus Christ, they will not be saved. There is no special salvation. Now, you go back to the promise that was given to Abraham. All right. The promise was given to Abraham and a seed of the promise of everlasting life. Okay. Now, it's important to understand that the seed is Jesus Christ. It's not big nose and dark hair. That's not the seed. And he saith not seeds as of many, but as of one into thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He's talking about people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the people that are born of God. So the difference between Old Testament and New Testament is in the Old Testament the nation of God was gathered into one group. Now in the New Testament the nation of God is scattered all around the world it, and it's available for anybody that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and then upon the return of Jesus Christ he will gather them all to himself and the wicked will be destroyed. All right. So this has been the plan since the beginning. This is nothing new. And um, the only way to everlasting life is through Jesus Christ. It's always been about faith. It's never been about, uh, you know, <clears throat> your, your DNA. It's never been about your flesh. Flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. It's never been about uh, having, uh, you know, a specific... Uh, DNA, it, you know, in your it. I could get into this. I wanted to make this short. He is made of all nations one blood. All right. So there's no special bloodline that does not exist. It's not in the Bible anywhere. It defeats or it contradicts anything in the Bible uh, regarding this particular uh, subject. So. Um, I want to make this short, and I'm making it long, but anyways, you get the idea. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're born with a big nose and dark hair, that doesn't mean you have you don't need Jesus Christ. And I, and I find that abominable to be teaching that, well, hey, if you're a Jew, you don't need Jesus. That's ridiculous. You're not going to be saved without Jesus Christ. And the people in, that are living today in 1948 Israel... That's not the same Israel of the Bible. All right? And they all reject Jesus Christ. Judaism does not accept Jesus Christ. They reject Jesus Christ. And of course, we go to Revelation 3. All right, so I'm making this way longer than I wanted. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. This is at the end of the world, when we are gathered together with the Lord up in the air, and our enemy is at our feet, and fire will come down from heaven and devour them all. So anyways, uh, and then one more point, of course, um, this separation, you know, going from Old Testament to New Testament to going from the Old to the New uh, where the nation of God was gathered into one people 
and then now it's available for all people all right this Jesus makes that very clear too but just real quick I want to point out first Peter 2 verse 9 you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people this is talking about people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are a holy nation we are the nation of God all right and then um, of course Jesus himself says nation shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof this is the separate or this uh, changing process if you will whatever you want to call it where the nation of God was gathered in one group and then now it's available for everybody okay whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ so let me just stop right there I was gonna make I wanted to go about 30 seconds and I think I'm going about 30 minutes and then part three what was the third part this guy right here all right if I could let's see what he has to say one thing I can tell you about me is I'm always trying to prove what I believe I want you to take a look all right at this so first of hold on a second he wants he's always trying to prove what he believes so that's um, tunnel vision having a narrow view and it's uh, you know it's con there's this thing called confirmation bias where you only believe what you want to believe that's let the tr my advice is let the truth be your guide always okay put the truth above yourself but having said that let's listen to what he says this picture family what year do you think it was taken? I would say around about the 1800s. Let's focus on what's written on the top of the building. It says Anno D C C C X C. Family, what does Anno mean? It reads in a specific year, so it's like yeah, that's right. So, like uh, for example, it, uh, they tell us it's the year 2022. AD. AD stands for Anno Domini, with Anno meaning year and Domini meaning our Lord Jesus Christ. So Anno Domini is the 2022 second year of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or how did I say that, Goofy? Anyways, AD, the year of our Lord. It's like another way of saying in the year of and then the date. Here's where the rabbit hole begins, family. What does DCCCXC mean? Let's take a look at a Roman chart to interpret the letters. If you look to the right, DCCC is 800. If you look to the left, XC is 90. So DCCCXC is 890 or anno 890 or the year 890 rabbit holes goes deeper family let's look at another picture here is the same building what year do you think this picture was taken i would say around the 1900s because there's color in the photo but let's look at the top Look hard, family. There is a letter M that has been added to the top of the building. Let's compare the two pictures. As you can see, an M has been added to the building, family. So what does the M mean? If you look to the right, family, M represents 1,000. So in one picture, you had Anno 890. And in another picture, you had Anno 1890. All of this written on the same building. They added a thousand years. Yeah, okay, so that's very interesting because uh, if you if you follow me now for a while, you've heard me talk about this idea that maybe they have added a thousand years. So I want to, first of all, preface this by saying I, I'm not fully convinced of it. I'm intrigued by it, and I, I'm suspicious of it. Um, I'm a suspicious of this being the year 2022. All right, and 
this is not at all, this does not have anything at all to do with Revelation 20 in the thousand years. Nothing at all. And if Jesus comes back in 2033, which would be 1033, which would be exactly 1000 years after his death, burial, and resurrection. If he comes back in that year, that is just coincidental. It's not it's not biblically supported uh, in the sense that there's nothing in the Bible that says he'll come back in that year. Okay, and there's nothing that says the thousand years are literal. I don't believe that they are literal at all, because uh, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Right? I don't want to get into all that. I'm trying to keep this short. But okay, so having said that. The reason I, I find this suspicious is because when I was growing up, you know, I, I was in school in the 70s and the 80s, and all of our history was basically from about 1400 up. All right, maybe there was something in 1200. My, now keep in mind, my mind is a little bit fuzzy on details, but I don't recall any. I always thought that was strange that there was hardly any history from like 0 to about 1200 AD. Now of course I believe that's changed. A while back I looked at the timeline of human history and they've added a whole bunch of stuff there to make it look good. This is in my opinion. I don't believe none of it because I don't recall any of that when I was growing up. All right? That's just my experience. Right? My limited uh, experience. But now fast forward to when I became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and I started you know I first of all I read the book of John when I was 31 years old right I, I read John and then I went and read Matthew Mark Luke and John and then I read the entire New Testament and then I started on Genesis and it's interesting it once you start reading all this stuff you see the incredible amount of history that is being recorded in the Bible. So we got all this history being recorded all the way up until the time of baby Jesus, right? And then we have about a 1200 year gap where there's no history. And then history starts again, you know, was it, uh, you know, 1200 or was it 200? And to me, it makes me wonder did they add a thousand years to the calendar? It would make sense because it, then what what that would say is that um, you know Jesus wasn't that long ago, right? And then the colonization of people coming over to America and from Great Britain and from the surrounding uh, Western European countries, right, and coming over and slaughtering millions of Native Americans, right, and taking over the land. That happening after, uh, you know, the world, you know, when the world was in transformation, if you will. So we had the fall of the Roman Empire about 300 AD, Right, and that it transformed from the physical empire to the spiritual empire known as the Roman Catholic Church. Right, and so this all all this was happening in this transformation stage. It would all make sense. And then of course we didn't have the Bible put together perfectly in one language until sixteen hundred or six hundred AD. Would make a lot of sense if it was six hundred AD. Of course it's gonna take a long time. To gather all the manuscripts and then to put it all into one language, it's going to take some time, especially with the world going through a lot of transformation and all this and that. So it makes sense. That would take about 500 years, as opposed to 1,500 years. What you know? Why would it take so long? 1,500 years. Uh, 500 years is a long time. 1,500 years. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. To me, it would make more sense. Uh, when you look at every aspect of everything that's that we that we know about, to me it would make sense that they would add a thousand years. So then one more thing, and I you know I love this guy here. He this guy is super cool. 
I could never be this cool family listen to me I could never be this cool this guy is super cool some of you might still have doubts check out this coin it's a US five dollar see J783 that J signifies year and perhaps you remember me talking about that the J or the I was always put in front of the number of what year it was and then I suspect that they replaced the J or the I with the number one and that's how they added the year now this creates separation from the Lord Jesus Christ and it even puts into doubt you know his existence and we have a whole generation of children being brainwashed in the public school systems um, not taught the Bible and not taught the truth of Jesus Christ the one thing that remains though it you know, they'll tell us that it is the year 2022 AD which means the year of our Lord Jesus Christ anybody want evidence of Jesus Christ what evidence is there of it well look at the calendar the year 2022 AD the year of our Lord Jesus Christ of course there's you know people wanting to change AD because they don't like that idea they'll change it to CE common era all right just to confuse and to get away from the Lord I mean this is consistent with what's been happening really all throughout history people trying to separate themselves and others away from God dollars but look at the date it reads J783 not 1783 when was the United States formed check out this coin it reads J783 also when was your constitution established something is wrong with the dates family friend up America. yeah something's wrong with that because uh, that J absolutely signifies year now maybe that's Photoshop maybe this other thing was photoshopped uh, I'd like you to you know if you had any thoughts or anything you'd like to add rabbit hole begin um, I'd like to I'd like to hear him you know I don't know maybe this photo is photoshopped reading through some of the comments somebody said well what happened was there was an M up there and it fell down landed on somebody's head now they're in a the hospital and so there's supposed to be an M there and other people are saying that's well that's just photoshopped and I don't know either way but I'm telling you it would make sense if they did add a thousand years okay that's it now hopefully this was about five minutes long I'm afraid it was about 50 minutes long